Hey, it's Chris. Oh, you guys want some more Mac apps? Well, good, because I got five amazing apps. These are all over the place. Some of them are for productivity, and they're just gonna be your new go-to tools. Others are just kind of fun little tweaks, but whatever you're after today, you're gonna find something new that you love. We're gonna kick things off with an app called Walling, which if you're a fan of Notion, you might really, really like. Now, what I like about it is that it's just a place to put all your ideas and your thoughts and tweets that you like and videos from YouTube. All that stuff can go on your wall, it's embeddable, and you don't have to think about how am I gonna organize this. You don't have to give it any structure. Just put it in, just save it, just capture it, and then later it'll be really easy to come back and find when you need it. What you get when you open this up is a daily desk. It's just this big blank slate. And then what you do is you add bricks. So what I'm gonna do is create kind of a little fake pseudo project here just to show you guys how this works. All right, so I'm gonna start putting in here some ideas for some short films. I kinda wanna get into short films. All right, so here's my first brick, and I like that it starts you out with the heading. You can make a checklist here, you can link things. Uh, so a brick can actually contain a lot of stuff. This is pretty cool. All right, so one idea for a short film is to address tech addiction. You know, like people who just can't put their phone down. So I put the header in and then I can come down and maybe give it some notes. So let's say, I, I found this cool lyric from a song recently. I'll try to post a song down below, but it was saying what you can't say no to controls you. That's kind of my driving idea behind this one. So, okay, so I'm gonna give it a node. And when you add a node, it's kind of like a topic or I guess a tag. Every program is gonna call it something different, but I'm just gonna say a short, film ideas. Now I'm just gonna keep adding in a few bricks here until I fill up this wall. It's gonna be a blur for you, but it's gonna take me a while, so hold on. Okay, so I dropped some different bricks in and these are all text so far. And what I like is that I can drag these around. If I don't like that there, I can just move these around a little bit because they default to just going straight down, which is nice. Uh, then I can kind of just arrange this. It's kind of free flowing. There's not a rigid structure to follow, which is the whole thing here. And now what I wanna do is throw in some of my inspiration. So what I'm gonna do is go onto YouTube and pick a couple of videos. I'm gonna copy their URLs and then I'm gonna put those in the brick. So I'm gonna type the URL and then that video appears in my brick. And then I'm gonna give it a node of short films. So I'm connecting all these things, but I'm just dumping it all into this daily desk section. And I don't have to worry about putting it into a certain folder or organizing or hierarchy or anything like that. There's this guy named Daniel Titchener. He's really making some cool stuff. Let's see if I can embed one of his. Now I've got another video. This is really cool. I love how clean the interface is. This is a super clean interface. It doesn't feel cluttered, very digitally minimalistic. You know whose channel I've been liking lately is Kevin James. He's doing some short films and they're funny and they're emotional. All right, Pizza Royale. I haven't even seen this, but it sounds hilarious. So I'm gonna grab that. All right, so there we go. I've put some YouTube videos in here. I've put some just ideas in here and I can grab these bricks and rearrange them and it's just working really well. So now what I can do is I can come over to the connect tab and I can find a node. Let's do short film ideas. And then it just shows me everything with that tag. But what I like is I can come into the connect section and I can stack those topics. So if I had short film ideas and I had graphic design ideas or branding ideas or you know actors that I wanted to be in here, then I could just connect all of that stuff and stack those nodes and really start making some connections between all of my thoughts. So once you have a bunch of nodes and a bunch of bricks in each node, you can actually see a cool graph that will help you explore your brain basically in all the content that you've put into this program. All right, Text Sniper is our next app and this thing is insanely cool. So let's say that you are on a website and you see an image that has some text in it. It's a lot of text, you'd like to save it, but you don't wanna open up a note and start typing it out you know, by hand. Number one, laziness. Number two, you might make a mistake. You know, Sometimes names are crazy and stuff. Text Sniper is like a screenshotting tool with OCR. So you take a screenshot kind of with it and then it pulls out the text and copies it to your clipboard. So you can paste it wherever you want. It's brilliant. So right here, I'm gonna test this right on their website. And Text Sniper lives up in your menu bar. So I'm gonna go up there, 
I'm gonna grab it. Then I'm gonna say capture text. You can also do, it looks like shift command two as a shortcut and then just drag it, boop, like this. It says copy to clipboard. How fast was that? Maybe a second, maybe. All right, and then I'm gonna go into drafts and I'm gonna go capture and paste this and see what it got, paste. It got it, it got celery, carrots, onions, one cup each, command plus V, shopping list, all the text that was there in that image is now in my draft. Oh yeah, it got everything. I don't see any spelling mistakes. That is absolutely a thing of beauty. I mean, who could use this uh, besides everybody? I mean, again, if you're a student, if you're a business person, if you're taking notes, if you're doing research, I think that's when oftentimes you might come across like a PDF or something. If you're on YouTube, you see a YouTube video that's got some text on the screen, you can text snipe it. Screencasts, there you go. You know, if you're in a boring Zoom or something, you're supposed to be taking notes, psh, just text snipe every shot of somebody's presentation and you got it. You know, it's the kind of thing that now that you know of it, I think you'll use it all the time. All right, we're gonna switch directions a little bit and talk about a screensaver app. I know, completely different direction, but this is great. I mean, you're a Mac user and you only have so many screensavers to choose from, right? And the built-in ones, the default ones, they can get old pretty fast. Well, Arial is an app that's been around for a while. It's now in version two, which is why I'm covering it now because it just got this update. And they've added some amazing, just flyover drone, picturesque content. So if you like the screensavers on your Apple TV, this is very much in that same vein, super cinematic, slow-mo, and the first time that you see one of their cinematic slow motion screensavers pop up, you're like, oh wow, I've really been missing out. It kind of transports you and really changes up the look and feel of your Mac experience, but also the space that you're in your office. And guess what? It's completely free, it's open source. So people are always bugging me like, oh Chris, why didn't you feature more free apps? Or I can't believe I had to pay for that. You got space shots, you got Alamo Square, you got cities, you got coastline, Dubai, Los Angeles. Oh, so here you go. Here's a great shot, a preview of Edinburgh. It says Edinburgh flyby around the Salisbury Crags. That looks like a really fun drill right there. But this is a little bit different, right, than your average Mac screensaver. You know, prior to this, I was using Drift, which is the newest of Apple's official screensavers which came out, I don't know, last year or something with the, the new Mac OS. And it's great, a lot of people still don't even realize that it's there. So that is cool, I guess that's sort of a little tip if you didn't realize that you could get Drift. People ask me all the time, what is that? All right, the next app we're gonna check out, it does cost, it's not cheap, it's 30 bucks. This one may appeal to more of a niche crowd. I'm thinking creative people, it's called Hustle. And basically, like it says, it's just about creating awesome time-lapse videos of your Mac screen. Now. I probably have mentioned this in several videos, but I went to school for graphic design, which I do nothing with at all anymore. But uh, how cool would it be to go through and, and just have a really awesome time-lapse replay of all the work that went into a logo or a shirt design or a brochure? Do people still do that? That's the kind of things what we were designing in class back then. A billboard, <laughs> a website. Okay, so as the demo video plays here, I can just say, this really reminds me of what you get in Procreate. So if you go into Procreate, uh, just whatever you do anyways on your iPad, it's already gonna be captured. And then it makes a really great uh, automatic video playback for you, which you can export. Well, this is like that, but for anything on your Mac, it's not just for one specific application. If you have anything that you're proud of or that you need to show the process behind, you know, it could even be typing a novel or something, I suppose, you know. What's cool about it, it's not gonna be a, a major resource hog because it's gonna be running in the background. And look, if I'm a video editor, I need all my computational resources already. I don't need something else taxing the system. So what this is saying is it's 10 times more efficient than its previous version. You know, you've seen some videos on YouTube where somebody does like a speed painting. Well, this is the kind of software that can help you do that. And what's important to understand is it's not just taking a big long video. If I just sit here and record my screen with you know the Mac's built-in tools, that's gonna be an enormous file, too big. But this is literally like a timeline. Here is an amazing feature that I'm really glad they baked in here is that you can capture only the active app. So you can pick, for instance, Adobe Lightroom and just really show off only what's in that screen. So when you switch over to your email, you're not accidentally giving away your email address. And wow, look at this. It actually supports 4K and 8K content. That's insane. So it's gonna come out looking really good. Oh, and this is nice. You can pause your time-lapse. 
So you really get a lot of control creatively over how it looks, how it feels, how fast it is, all the different little preferences. All right, the last app that we're gonna check out today, this fits into more of the power user category, but I think anybody could learn to like it. It's called iCommand, I think, I-C-M-D. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it, iCommand. And it's about working smarter, not harder. Who doesn't like that? So what this is, is a way for you to more conveniently navigate your screen using just your keyboard without a mouse. That's the gist of it. So this is kind of funny, but here's the gist of this, right? It says switching between your keyboard and your mouse costs you three seconds of your life every single time. What it's saying is you could be being productive right here, typing away, doing some work. Then you gotta come over here, switch to your mouse. Oh, it's too slow. It's gonna cost you some time. If you do that repetitively over and over and over throughout the day and the week and the month and the year, well, you could be a little more productive. I guess emphasis on a little probably if you save some of that time, shave off those three seconds. But what it does is it brings up some keyboard combinations uh, or as an overlay over your screen, kind of like some accessibility features that you may have seen before. So here in this example video, you can see if you're navigating the Apple TV app and you want to pick a specific video, then you hit the keyboard shortcut, it brings up the different uh, shortcut commands and you type it and it selects it for you. It's like the same thing as a mouse click when you type those. And in that way, you can actually navigate an entire screen, whether it's a website or an app, you can actually take actions. And then there's a really cool search feature too. So instead of digging through a menu, you can bring up this search and it will bring up the actions that can be taken from within menus. So this is actually really clever. Yeah, this is called thinking outside the box. I mean, the time-saving thing, I don't really care about that, to be honest. But, you know, this could be a preferred way to work is what I'm thinking for certain people. If you just don't wanna mess around with the mouse, you know, and you find it easier, just do everything on the keyboard, this is a different way of, it's an option, that's what it is. It's a new way of interacting that maybe you haven't considered before. So there you go, you can consider it. That's it for this video. Everything's gonna be listed down in the description, so go check it out. If you haven't, make sure to check out applehype.com, something good for you if you're an Apple user, every Monday through Friday. I know I missed a couple days. I'm still in the middle of this move. So thanks for cutting me some slack. Check me out, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. I would love to interact with you guys there. And don't forget to check out the podcast. It's the Daily Tech After Party, comes out every Friday. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.